Hey, Greg, did you see these heat map Cortez that I did? They're getting quite a bit of attention, if I say so myself. <laughs> what? Photoshop? Filters? What? What the? Oh, that's it. Greg, get the camera. We're doing a tutorial. Hey, I'm Brian Phillips with Swell Guy Customs, and today I'm going to show you how to put a heat map effect on the Nike Cortez. Heat map has been seen in a variety of ways, from storm watch weather forecasts to action sci-fi films like The Predator. For me, my inspiration came from the album Iridescence by the group Brockhampton, which features a pregnant woman with a heat map filter on it. So I thought it'd be fun to take that same heat map look and apply it to the Nike Cortez. The first step is always gonna be unlacing and prepping the shoe. This Nike Cortez is the nylon version where majority of the upper is made out of a nylon material. The swoosh and heel tab are leather while the toe and heel have suede material. Today we're gonna be focusing on just the leather and the suede materials and we're gonna leave the nylon the same blue color that it is. Now that we've got our shoe prepped and ready to go, the first thing we're going to do is paint the swoosh and the heel tab with the heat map effect. In order to get it perfect, we're going to use an airbrush. So first, we got to tape up the shoe to protect the shoe from getting paint anywhere it's not supposed to. We got the shoes all taped up and ready for the airbrush. Now we just need to get the paint prepped. First, I'm going to start mixing the green. I'm going to use a mixture of the neon Amazon green and the Grinch green. I like the brightness of the neon green, but I'm gonna use the Grinch green to give it a little bit more thickness and viscosity to it. For the yellow, I'm gonna do a mixture of Tropic Sun Neon Yellow and Tour Yellow. To make the red, I'm gonna use mostly Jamaican Joy with a little bit of infrared and Paradise Purple. This will turn it into sort of a hot red pink color. And then for all of these, since we're putting it through the airbrush, we wanna add some Too Thin to it. Too thin is gonna thin it out and make it run through the airbrush a lot smoother. We don't want it to get all clogged up in there and mess up your airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, it's okay. You can still make the effect with a sponge or spouncer kit for the blending, but for the best results, I recommend the airbrush. When pouring the airbrush, it's always a smart idea to pass it through a filter just to catch any last little pieces of dried paint or dust that got through. You don't want anything to get inside the airbrush that's not supposed to be in there and clog it up. So the way that heat mapping works in weather forecasts or heat vision is that it goes from cold to warm, usually on your body or any sort of flame, would be more of a red, orange color, while anything cold would be a cooler blue or green. So we're gonna work our way from green all the way down to red to the middle of the swoosh in the back of the hill. So when working on this project, we wanna get our paint in very specific places, so we're gonna have to use a lot of airbrush control on this one. Keeping it on low pressure and not pulling back on the trigger too much will allow a lot more control in how much paint gets out. So keeping it at a low pressure and only moving the trigger just slightly lets out a small little stream of paint that we're able to control a lot better. You can almost use it like a pencil in a way. Next color I'm gonna put on is the pink, then the yellow. The reason for this is that the yellow is a very thin and light color. So if I put on the yellow first and then the pink and I put too much pink, I can't fix that with the yellow. So I'm gonna put the pink where I need it first and then fill in the rest with the yellow. I want the yellow to fill in every little remaining space on the shoe, even if it's going over the red or the green. This will actually give us some in-between tones between the three colors. 
Next, I'm gonna take some white and just add a little bit to the center of the red parts to indicate the hottest part of the heat map. We've got all our paint on, now we just need to remove the tape and add some blue suede dye to the suede parts of the shoe. It may seem weird that I'm using blue suede dye on top of already blue suede, but the way that the dye works is it's not painting on top of it like we use the Angelus paint on the leather. It sort of mixes in with the color of the suede it already is. So by adding this blue on top of this blue, it's gonna turn it into sort of a richer royal blue, which is what I'm looking for. We've got the dye on the suede, so there's still one more important step to take, and that's to rub a little bit of denatured alcohol off the top of the suede, getting rid of any excess dye that might not have soaked in. It's important to rub down the suede with the denatured alcohol to remove any of the excess dye. You don't want the dye to get on your shoe in places it's not supposed to, or on your pants, or any other clothing. The dye is permanent, so once it gets on something, it's really hard to remove. We're getting down to the final steps. All that's left to do is hit it with some high gloss acrylic finisher and lace them up. And we're done. Heat map Nike Cortez Customs. No filter, no Photoshop, just some patient airbrushing, a little bit of dye on the toe and heel. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brian Phillips with Swell Guy Customs. You can check out my work on Instagram and Facebook at Swell Guy Customs. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.